well, back in the 1970s, 80s and 90s, I was heavily involved in the British music scene, mostly in London. I was a band manager. I managed Gina Washington and the Ram Jam Band. A band called Here and Now. Other people. And I ran various pub venues and I also wrote about music for Time Out, that was later on. And then I promoted shows at the 100 Club and the Borderline and places like that. And here are five acts which are as good as the big superstar names. There's no order. The first one is Sam Mitchell. made a video about him you can see a link in it so there and there'll be one in the description you can check that video out Sam Mitchell was an astounding blues guitarist sly guitarist he played a steel guitar he came from Liverpool he was very big in the London pub scene of especially in West London where he would sell out venues like the King's Head Fulham the Half Moon Putney places like that I mean he'd regularly pull two or three hundred people the bass player was usually Bill Blair the drummer was a guy called Mickey Waller who who's best known for playing on all the Rod Stewart solo albums, well, the first ones, the good ones. And um, that was Sam Mitchell. Unfortunately, he died in, I think, 2006. Unfortunately, very few people know about Sam Mitchell. Another guitarist who's absolutely amazing, Roger Hubbard. Have you heard of him? Still going now. I put him on a few times with his band Buick Six. He was active in the 1970s and 80s. He was a phenomenal slide guitarist. Muddy Waters, no less. He's quoted in Sounds magazine saying, Roger Hubbard is as good as any guitarist in the UK or America. Came from Brighton and he played in the London folk clubs in the 60s. I first heard about Roger Hubbard because uh, my dad wrote a uh, review of his record uh, in Rolling Stone magazine back in the early 70s. There are a lot of barriers to entry when it comes to emulating that music. There are it's cultural barriers when it comes to the lyrics. It's technically difficult. Roger Hubbard is one of just a handful of people who can play like John Hurt or Skip James or uh, Book of White or Robert Johnson or, or Bo Carter in a way that's it's authentic and accurate and also creative. He dropped out of sight, he was tipped for stardom. Basically what you got to bear in mind is the people that we see now who are like people like Eric Clapton. Don't this back. Can't get it back. They had a lot of luck because there were people like Sam Mitchell, Roger Hubbard out there who were possibly as good, if not better. I mean, I know it sounds a bit, a bit weird to say, but I've never really rated Eric Clapton that highly because I don't think he's got a soul. His music, to me, sounds very clean, very accomplished, but there seems to be nothing behind it. And frankly, some of his um, comments he made back in the 1970s or 80s when it was when he was out of his head on drugs, he's basically being racist on stage. Now, to be honest with you, nobody forces you to stand on stage and say anything even though he now says just foreign people kind of what were they taking over the country so i mean as a simple-minded working class villager like me uh, which is what a brexit is all about in a way is that you're getting interviewing people in pubs and letting encouraging them to say the things they say and i was there there was a sort of air of this uh, around the early 70s and i'm not excusing myself it was an awful thing to do and, when and then you look the, at it now when you yeah. have to look back at it yeah what does it make you think i think it's funny actually <laughs> Whereas a lot of better people were around then, I mean, as I say, Roger Hubbard, Sam Mitchell, Tony McPhee from the Groundhogs. Soda, fix your bailing before the enemy come. Now, the Groundhogs had a huge success in the late 1960s and 1970s, but then Punk came along and they got swept. Plus, their manager, a bit of a gangster called Wilf Pine. What persuaded you to do the book The Englishman and the Mafia with John Pearson? I think 
The thing is, Barbara, I think everybody's got a story somewhere along the line. And seeing as my name kept cropping up, I think, in every gangster book, and people assuming different things which to me were completely untrue. He, I think, milked Tony for all his money. I worked with Tony in the 70s and 80s, and um, he was fantastic. But unfortunately, he had health problems and he had strokes and things that meant he couldn't play the guitar, couldn't sing. And he did a few comebacks and things and did it. But unfortunately, it's not worked out for him. Now, you mention it to like people, they won't have heard of Tony McPhee. It's a real shame. I'm not even willing to the heavy rock thing that the Groundhogs became. I mean, Tony was like a blues guitarist to start with. He played with John Lee Hooker and people like that. And when John Lee Hooker came to the UK, it was John Lee Hooker and the Groundhogs. And Tony McPhee and John Lee Hooker hung out together and they played guitar together and riffs and things. And that's where Tony got his technique from. And I was possibly five or 10 years too late to meet all this, which, which is probably good for now because it means I'm still here. Hey, hello. But it meant that the 1960s was a bit of a, well, I was at school up till 1972. So um, I did miss the 1960s really, especially when you were in school in West Wales, which is about as far as you can get from the um, center of swinging London. So who else can we recommend? Peter Green from Fleetwood Mac. Now he was the first guitarist with Fleetwood Mac. I never saw him in those days, but I saw him afterwards and he was a mere shadow because he had a breakdown and he had problems. Well, that was, that was the, the condition I came out of the ECT uh, room. And that's what, EC, that's what it did to me. It uh, made me, my head feel like uh, sort of brickwork, sort of like it was um, shaped like a head, but it was sort of, you couldn't use it, couldn't make it, I couldn't think, you know. But um, even then, you would, I saw him at um, Dingle's, I think it was, sometime, I can't remember, it was 80s, was it? But I do remember he played for not that long, I played for about 50 minutes, as I recall. And during that time, there were like four or five little sparks. You can see, yes, that guy was, the, I mean, behind that shell that he'd become, it was, there was something exciting. And of course, that was what the early Fleetwood Mac was when it was like a British band. And there's someone else there in, lurking in the background because Christine Perfect, who went on to become Christine McPhee, was the lead singer in Chicken Shack, which was led by a blues guitarist who's still going now. I put him on at my last show that I ever did, which was at the Winter Gardens in Margate, and that was Stan Webb's Chicken Shack. And Stan Webb, again, had a big hit in the 1960s with Christine Perfect, later McVie, singing I'd Rather Go Blind. But Stan, again, a guitarist, I'm not supposed to say this possibly, but when I used to put him on at the Borderline and the 100 Club, he frankly used to drink a little too much, I would have suggested. I've seen Stan on stage where he couldn't actually speak because he was um, so drunk but he could still play an amazing solo on the guitar. Again, Stan could have been much bigger, but it's Again, which is what I started to say, a lot of these things are being seen by the right person who puts the money in, and also partly selling your soul, because a lot of the big people in the 1960s and things had to sell their soul. Well, I had to be at that there crossroads last midnight, sell my soul to the devil. Well, ain't it a small world, spiritually speaking? And basically, let someone else take 
quite a lot of uh, money. So when somebody comes along and says, I'll make you a star, sign here, they tend to sign here, and uh, bang goes all the money. But in many cases, it meant they became very rich and very famous later. Some did, some didn't. So that's what I say, it was a bit of a lottery. If you sign with the wrong person, you're not gonna do it. If you sign with the right person, shoo, there you go. But who knows who the right person is? It's all fate. And another person like that was John B. Spencer, another artist I used to manage. But because I think he deserves a bit more time than we have here, I'm gonna do a whole video on John B. Spencer. So watch out for that. I'll be doing that quite soon. So thank you for watching. These are just some of the people I think have been underrated and could have done a lot better. Um, not that they're not great performers, just that fate didn't fall their way. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.